So, hello, uh, my name is Rob McLarnon. Uh, I'm an instructor in the electrical trades area. Um, and I was basically the author, or, or co-author, I should say, or co-developer of this uh, renewable energy electrical systems uh, program. And it's uh, sort of focused on installation and maintenance, as the, as the name of it uh, suggests. Uh, I've given people here a handout, and maybe I'll just sort of let the PowerPoint drive what I'm saying. You guys can refer to this handout, which will ultimately will reach when we get into a particular slide as we go. Um, th uh, this says that it's an advanced certificate, so I think we comment on that later on in this uh, slide presentation. Uh, this is going to be offered on a part-time studies basis. There are eight three-credit courses, each 45 hours in length. The delivery will be face-to-face. -face. That is, uh, there will be, at this point, there won't be any online uh, component of it. And we're trying to emphasize the hands-on aspect of it. So as you walk through, or some of you here in attendance will uh, be seeing later, we have quite a bit of equipment, and the emphasis will be on actually making use of that equipment. Again, in installation and maintenance. So the installation aspect of it relates to things like electrical codes, for example, and maintenance relates to troubleshooting and testing. Prerequisites. And now this is the prerequisites for the program, not for a couple of the introductory courses. So uh, the prerequisites are that somebody be an electrical engineering practitioner with the BC Safety Authority uh, Field Safety Representative Class A or Class B. Uh, so by practitioner, we mean somebody that is uh, in engineering, uh, or I mean somebody could be an engineer, or in engineering, or engineering technology. Um, and so partway through uh, some engineering studies, electrical engineering that is not other engineering. Uh, or a Red Seal electrician. And that would mean construction electrician or industrial electrician. Uh, so we have a bit of a slightly unusual mix here. People say, is this trades or is it, is it engineering, is it technical? Well, it's somewhat of a convergence. Uh, and depending on people's backgrounds, they're going to get different things out of this. The engineering people that are recent grads will get some hands-on experience. And people that are uh, trades people will get uh, more technical upgrading in various ways. Um, a BCIT requirement for advanced certificate level programs is that you have English 12 with 67% or some equivalent. And there's, you could have to look it up on the website to see what the equivalents are to that 67%. The cost of this program, there are eight courses, is about $10,000. Uh, that would include, um, of course, tuition, books, and materials. And uh, some of the materials, for example, you end up uh, owning a controller and some software for programming it, so that's fit folded into that $10,000. Uh, in putting together this program, uh, it's sort of somewhat of an involved process to get uh, a new program launched at BCIT. And so you have to rationalize the existence of the program, driven by whatever the, the various background reasons might be. Uh, so I won't read all, through all this, I'll, I'll, um, but just the high points are that there is an absence of, of programs and courses that relate to renewable energy, and especially programs where the whole gamut of renewable energy sources is covered. And likewise, we have quite a few employers who are uh, looking to get into new areas. People who, uh, they, they realize it's coming uh, and they want to get ready for it. They want to have, you know, what employees are they looking for in the future? I attended a conference in San Diego and at the conference I talked to one of the person that worked for a company, one of the bigger ones in photovoltaics. And the, the company 
had 70 trucks. On every truck, they had three people. Every day, each of those trucks went out and did an installation on one house. So on Monday, there were 70 installations. On Tuesday, there were 70 installations. On Wednesday, there were 70 installations, and so on. So that was just one company, and obviously one of the bigger ones. And California, obviously, is sunnier than it is right here, but obviously there's lots of sun in Canada, and even in the interior of BC. So the growth potential is there, but on both sides, both the people looking for work or looking for the future work, and employers looking for future employees that can do the future work, that's part of the rationale behind this program. And of course, in the, uh, well, all industries, I guess, based on the demographics, uh, there's a skills shortage based on uh, retirements out of the workforce. Lots of other driving forces behind this. Uh, at the municipal level, uh, I won't go into detail, but the city of Vancouver has mandated that they have uh, emit far fewer greenhouse gases. Uh, the government has uh, stated that they're committed to taking action to encourage the development of low impact renewable energy in Canada and so on. And the state of California, they're gonna cut the pollutants to 40% below 1990 levels by the year 2030 and so on, right? So we have lots of driving forces that we hear about pretty much every day. And the objectives of this program, uh, some of these are sort of uh, meat and potatoes and motherhood, and you have to sort of say this as part of getting your program approved. Uh, work effectively as part of a team. Of course, naturally, there's project work involved in this as well as just uh, straight out uh, classroom and lab learning. Um, Interpret documentation and communication uh, effectively with engineers, designers, tech support people to install, calibrate, commission, modify, repair, and maintain renewable energy systems. So that sort of covers a fairly good, uh, what really the core of it is about. Um, so you're interpreting uh, drawings, you're interpreting technical material, and also part of it is getting the, uh, the installation job done or the maintenance and repair job done. And of course that means having the right terminology and understanding of things at a fairly deep technical level. And so the idea is to install. That means, again, relating to electrical codes. Calibrate, that means set up uh, equipment that might uh, be, say for example, measurement equipment, uh, positioning equipment, for example, positioning a nacelle to line up with the wind property, so there's some uh, setup requirement there. Uh, modify, that might mean making some program changes or some parameter changes um, to repair, and that means uh, where, there, where it stops working, to troubleshoot it and fix it, and also maintain. Of course, maintain means things such as uh, doing day-to-day -day maintenance, some cases changing filters, it's, uh, some of it's fairly sort of mundane, but uh, it's, it's all part of the, the uh, gamut of things that are part of the industry. Uh, there's some design aspect to this. Uh, obviously, we're not going to be sitting down and turning people into designers of windmills and that sort of thing, but definitely systems have to come together, uh, especially, if, uh, for example, in photovoltaic systems. At the end of this, uh, you would become eligible to write a, an exam that is um, uh, going to be uh, sat here at BCIT, and it's that NABSEP exam. We'll talk more about NABSEP later, but they're basically a North America-wide body that does exams uh, for people that are in the photovoltaics, uh, wind, and micro-hydro areas. Uh, so part of it is design. And we say small scale because we're not really, really intending that people are going to be designing uh, mega projects. But you'll have a good basis to work from. And I think a majority of people will be able to do a basic design and go out and uh, I wouldn't be, rush out and hang out my shingle on day one. But you certainly be well prepared to work for somebody that's in the area and to be able to complement their, their uh, maybe even a fledgling workforce and 
be part of a team to, uh, to grow a business that's growing in that area. Uh, make drawings. So in system integration, partly to make drawings in a, that have to be submitted for approvals, uh, especially if there's changes to be made, that's uh, part of, the, of, of doing installations. Uh, more in, to do with installation in compliance with codes, again, electrical codes, standards, practices, and manufacturer's instructions. That goes right down to everything like torquing bolts to make sure that the connections that are made uh, uh, meet to the standards for the job and the specifications for the job. Uh, set up communication for remote and local monitoring and control of renewable energy systems. Um, just recently, and as part of the getting ready to deliver this program, we had a representative in from one of the local uh, vendors, and we uh, demonstrated and will be implementing a smartphone app that will allow you to remotely monitor a system and remotely monitoring uh, any aspects from like, yes, it's, everything's running properly, or being flagged and being sent a text to notify you that the system is in some sort of distress, or even just for monitoring to see, for example, reading a value such as what is the output of that uh, photovoltaic array right now. And to the extent of if, uh, well, there's all sorts of faults that can be flagged. So th that's the, under the general heading of communication equipment. And that means uh, dealing with uh, ethernet to some extent, and nobody's an IT expert, uh, but, it will give enough information to allow you to set up a router, to allow you to access uh, equipment that has Ethernet ports on it, which is, of course, quite ubiquitous these days. Uh, and a minor amount of control can be done remotely as well, so that's part of the picture. Commission and troubleshoot renewable energy systems, including the calibration and programming of measurement and control devices. Uh, of course, uh, devices have, uh, out of the box, they are uncalibrated quite often. I'm talking about measurement devices. Uh, in some instances, we're dealing with uh, things like variable frequency drives, which uh, will, of course, they, uh, allow motors to be run at different speeds. So uh, out of the box, they need to have parameters set on them. Um, so again, calibration and programming, set up. Great documentation. Uh, part of, of course, this is kind of trying, I mean, part of the rationale is to have a, a profitable uh, enterprise and all, every installation obviously has to be done safely and uh, we want to make money for the people that are uh, um, take, undertaking to do the work. And of course that requires um, doing things like making uh, proposals, meeting with clients, uh, making estimates, uh, applying for permits of various sorts, and ultimately having the project accepted by the, uh, the ultimate owner of the project. And as well, uh, having acquired a quite a pretty vast um, array of uh, knowledge on top of the background that you already have, uh, the expectation is, of course, that you would be directing others to do work and uh, doing training of the system end users. So that's part of it. Also analyze the performance and make recommendations for improvements, which is uh, part and parcel. There's a lot of stuff covered there. Um, is there any questions there about sort of, I mean, this kind of covers the waterfront in a lot of ways, but maybe is there anything obviously that's been omitted or anything that that you think is, well, what does that mean? Or, you know, we, we will elaborate on some of these things as we go along. Any questions? Just for the drawings? Like yes. What program? Uh, that's a little bit up in the air at this point. Um, we, of course, AutoCAD, for example, is kind of a, often a go-to choice for making drawings. We'll definitely be, have AutoCAD uh, on the computers in the labs. You'll definitely be opening drawings that, ha that are AutoCAD drawings, so you'll be uh, uh, interpreting and making use of AutoCAD. Now, uh, that 
portion of it is, uh, we'll say it's under development at this point, kind of working out how many hours we're going to be able to jam in or squeeze in and, and make the best use of the time. Um, we, I guess it's a little bit of a hope that people have some, some drawing background already, uh, at the very least able to make a good schematic on a piece of paper at the very least and then the, the detail of putting it into AutoCAD. And often in a design environment, uh, I work for consultants where I basically sketch it out. This is what it's supposed to, this is the concept, hand it off to a draftsman and let them do the AutoCAD aspect of it, right? So you don't want to get too far into trying to learn something that's got a ton of detail in it itself. Just stick to the subject matter at hand, right? Okay. Okay, so these are the uh, courses that are, that make up the program. Eight courses. The, uh, the first one is relating to a programmable relay. Uh, how many people here know what a programmable relay is, just for, the, for fun? You guys? One, two, yeah, no, a little bit? A little bit. Okay, so uh, maybe a certain percentage do. Programmable relay is a controller that you can control by connecting it to a, or you can program by connecting it to a PC and basically uh, make outputs from the controller do things based on the status of inputs. So it's an input output device. And uh, part of the program, and this is actually a very interesting course from my point of view because it's in my sort of in my wheelhouse, I guess, regarding automation and programmable devices. Um, the device will be purchased by the student. I think it's a hundred and well, let's call it two hundred dollars with the programming software, and it lends itself to many different things, such as home automation and lots of other things. But it happens to be applicable to the uh, renewable energy area. Uh, the analog devices aspect of that relates to measurement and measurement and sensing. Uh, especially the measurement aspect would be things like measuring pressure, measuring flow, um, measuring temperature, for example. So various uh, aspects of any system uh, has certain things that you'd like to measure, indicate, be able to read, set alarms, uh, cause uh, trip outs if need be. Uh, so that, that's the, the gist of the first course there. The second course is the elements of renewable energy systems. It's sort of a, a math and science and circuit analysis course. Uh, if, um, how many people here are, are uh, electricians as such? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, we got a, almost a, more than half or more of the people here are uh, electricians. Uh, the math and science and circuit analysis part of it would, it kind of takes what uh, an electrician's level, it cranks it up a notch, and you deal with uh, certain types of circuit analysis methods, um, deals with uh, things like heat transfer, uh, things that you touched on in, in during an apprenticeship, but at a, well, we're going to look back on it and say it was a, it was a light touch and we're going to be looking at uh, drilling down a little further into those topics. Uh, so it's kind of a math and science and circuit analysis um, course. The third one, programmable logic controllers. It takes what's been learned about in the first course and steps it up into more depth, more programming. And there's a, a lot of programmable controllers and programmable relays in renewable energy systems and in lots of other systems, but a lot, specifically industrial processes, um, manufacturing processes, and um, and and in, in instrumentation type processes such as um, uh, piping and pumping gas and various other things. So the programmable logic controllers uh, would be, you know, things like positioning a, a wind turbine nacelle, for example. Uh, it, we'll see this later in the in the lab demonstration. Uh, the fifty forty variable frequency drives and electrical machines. Electrical machines come into it, talking there about uh, uh, generators, basically, or motors used as generators, as happens quite often. Uh, so the electrical machines would be relating to uh, wind power, 
uh, micro hydro power, and also, of course, in a wind turbine in a nacelle positioner, you use a motor positioning the nacelle to line up with the wind. So uh, that's uh, what that course is about. Uh, the 6010, installation of fluid-driven renewable energy systems. Fluid-driven basically is wind power, uh, micro-hydro, hydropower, hydrokinetic, uh, those various sorts of things whenever you have uh, generally water or uh, wind cranking something over, rotating it, you have a way of uh, generating uh, electrical energy. And just a touch or a mention there on tidal power, which is sort of a variant on the others. Installation of geothermal and solar thermal. Geothermal basically means pumping water under the ground and retrieving heat from that water pumped under the ground. So that's geothermal. Solar thermal basically is pumping water or some coolant or some liquid up through pipes or tubing on a roof and putting that heat down into a tank, for example, to heat water, right? So that's solar thermal. So those things both involve pumping fluid to, from a heat, warmer place to a cooler place and retrieving the energy that way, the energy of the, of the sun or the earth. So solar thermal and geothermal. Uh, 6030, uh, fuel cells. We'll point at a fuel cell in the lab. Those of you that are here will do the walk around later. And uh, fuel cells, of course, most of them are hydrogen-based. Uh, so by combining uh, hydrogen and oxygen, uh, you can create electricity. And so that's uh, what a fuel cell is, if you're not familiar with that. Energy storage, uh, these are other cells. Energy storage, in, in a nutshell, is basically batteries. And uh, batteries, uh, it's quite a lot to know about batteries, charging systems, and uh, inverters. And so that will be kind of a preamble to the, maybe the icing on the cake, the one that probably most people would like to get at first, which is the last one, uh, photovoltaic renewable energy systems. And of course, that's the solar panels you see that generate electricity directly. And that's the, the last of the eight courses. Uh, now, let me just back up a bit and ask, is there any questions about those? Is there anything that I, said that sort of seems to, like, you know, are we missing something <laughs> or is there something, any questions you have about any of that? We'll elaborate on this more probably than you want me to later on, so we'll see how it goes. Um, this is just a program map, basically it, it puts those eight courses in a sort of a, a tiered uh, arrangement and what the general coverage is within those courses. Uh, as I mentioned already, we're looking at the first over, or the cluster, I guess is this term there, the measurement and control of renewable energy systems. So measurement and control. The next cluster, heat and non-photovoltaic electrical energy acquisition systems. And uh, so there's certain three, three courses there that relate to that cluster. And then finally, the last cluster, photovoltaics, fuel cells, and energy storage. And there's two courses that, that are uh, the ones I just previously mentioned that relate to that. Okay, so thinking about getting into this, you're saying, oh gosh, they don't have the prerequisites for it. I, I, I'm not an engineering practitioner. I'm not a Red Seal electrician. Uh, you know, I guess I'm out. Well, no. The, the first two courses, the uh, 50, 10, the elements course, and the programmable relays uh, course, basically are open to all comers. Uh, so if you were sort of thinking, well, I, this sort of looks all right. I don't have the prerequisites. I'm not gonna go get into engineering or I'm not gonna uh, become an electrician in order to take this uh, without having some idea what it's about. We've uh, made the first two courses available to everyone. And the idea is that, um, you know, to kind of give you some exposure and some familiarity and look and feel, is this the sort of thing I can see myself doing? Maybe in the meantime, you'll have a better idea what the job prospects might be. Uh, so that kind of makes for easy entry. Now that's the, the good news, I guess. Now, 
Uh, so you haven't, uh, having taken those two courses, or take, before you take those courses, you don't have to register in the program as such. You're taking two courses is what you're doing at that point. Now, in order to take the third course, you have to be registered in the program. And that means you have to have met the prerequisites for the program. Uh, any questions on that? Uh, oh, this, may, this also opens the door, for example, people that are uh, taking an apprenticeship now. And if you're in apprenticeship, and if you're in second year, third year, whatever, you're thinking, look, I, I, you know, I, I'm looking at this renewable energy thing as being quite viable down the road. Uh, five years, ten years from now, I, I, I don't, can't see myself maybe doing uh, you know, r residential high-rises. Uh, maybe I want to be in this, uh, this field. So you might be looking at trying out one, uh, one or two of these courses and then really setting your sights on this as being your objective or maybe, maybe disqualifying and saying, well, this isn't my thing either. I'm going to do something different. So anyway, that's the gist of that. Any questions on that? So it's kind of a door opener. <clears throat> uh, the outcomes. The, uh, the credential that uh, a gr graduate having finished eight courses would receive is an advanced certificate. Now, an advanced certificate is, uh, put it in a little perspective, it's, it's above a diploma. Now, if uh, someone graduates from high school, for example, and they go through a two-year diploma program at BCIT, when whatever electoral or electronic option or whatever discipline you're in, uh, after that two years, you receive a diploma. Uh, this credential is actually a, a few credits above a diploma level. So it's, it's not to be, uh, you know, trifle with or not to be expected you're going to get this kind of handed to you. There's a fair amount of a kind of forewarning is a fair amount of rigor in the program, so there'll be some challenging assignments and some exams where you're going to be doing a bit of nail biting maybe at the end of it. So, you know, gee, that was a tough one, but um, to give you that's to give, gives you an idea of what level you're looking at. And of course, uh, as difficult as that may be along the way, when you get that thing in your hand, you go looking for a, a, an employer. But all, obviously, that's all to the good. The bad news is it's an unknown quantity at this point, so the employers don't know that this exists. Uh, it doesn't exist until we have completed it, but uh, it's, you'll, you'll be very credible in an interview, let's put it that way. Uh, the other outcomes, I mentioned this term NABCEP. NABCEP is uh, North America wide, and they basically uh, set exams for people in various disciplines such as photovoltaics. Uh, they have an entry level so-called associate uh, certificate. They have a PV technical sales uh, certificate. And under NABSAP as well, they do solar thermal aside from photovoltaics. So solar thermal, again, is, again, is pumping out water up to the roof and getting the heat from the sun. Uh, they also have a small wind uh, credential. And uh, so we went to uh, see, uh, visit the NABSAP uh, a conference in San Diego, talk to the people there, and uh, we are in the process of getting ourselves aligned to uh, be able to deliver the exams here at BCIT so that you don't have to go to, uh, go to California to write the exams. Um, there's a bunch of detail behind that, but that's the overview. So aside from getting the BCIT credential, uh, somebody would I won't, not anywhere near, nothing's automatic in the world, but having gone through this relatively, we'll call it at least uh, intermediate level of training, you would be more than ready for uh, writing a NABSEP exam. It should be somewhat of a, I won't say a no-brainer, but it would be relatively doable by somebody having completed this, uh, the, the ReSIM, this Renewable Energy Electrical Systems Installation and Maintenance Program that I'm talking about. Uh, so BCIT will become an exam center, as I mentioned. Uh, this is uh, probably not of great interest here. We're just talking about the conference in 2016. Certain features, details that were 
probably not going to uh, go drill down into. I mentioned this example of uh, this uh, one employer with all these uh, trucks and all these workers and all these systems going in uh, broadly and it's quite uh, interesting from our point of view because we don't see that much in the way of uh, photovoltaics other than on uh, off-grid uh, situations here. But uh, in the interior and especially in the U.S., they're just uh, all over the place. Okay, so I'm going to be whipping through some of these. We did talk about these uh, various courses. Uh, those of you here have the handout uh, with the, the, some of these uh, points I've mentioned already. But we have this programmable relays course that uh, does things just to hit a couple of high points there, set up Ethernet communication uh, and the PC locally and over the internet, set up communication between a programmable relay and a smartphone, uh, install, maintain, and so on and so on. So that's programmable relays and analog de devices. The elements one I mentioned is kind of a math and science and circuit analysis uh, uh, course. So I'm going to zap through that one. The next one's got to do with variable frequency drives and electrical machines. And again, emphasis on installation, maintenance, uh, configuration, troubleshooting. So I'll zap through that one. PLCs are programmable logic controllers. Uh, we'll, we'll point at some of those when we get up into the lab for those of you who are here. Any of you electricians here ever work in programmable controllers? Maybe some guys have one, two, anybody else, two? Okay, so it's, it's sort of in the, in the, in the uh, uh, bailiwick of, of electricians to do installations and this would take you beyond that, the installation and the pro some programming and uh, configuration. So it's very interesting stuff for me. Fluid driven, I mentioned what this is about, wind and micro hydro. Geothermal and solar thermal, again, uh, heat coming from the earth or the rooftop or the sun directly. Energy storage, as I mentioned, it's got to do with basically uh, batteries and creating electrical energy out of hydrogen combined with oxygen through a fuel cell. Photovoltaics, direct conversion of the, of, uh, the sun light into electrical energy. Okay, so this has got to do with basically where we're going to be uh, getting the word out, I guess, the various possible uh, uh, students for this program. So there will be ads, maybe some of you have seen ads, maybe that's why you're here, uh, that will uh, be kind of talking about the program or at least putting up a banner and a link uh, so you can track down more details about the program. Uh, various uh, people that we'll be dealing with, of course, in this building, we have quite a few electrical students uh, at any given time, and uh, we expect to uh, uh, get the word out to them. Electrical apprentices, again, for the first uh, two courses, people can take that, uh, those first two courses without actually being, uh, without being a journeyman. To take the following, the last six courses, you have to be a Red Seal electrician to register in the program. So well, this is a, kind of some promotional background here. We'll be uh, advertising maybe through the uh, engineering uh, APEG BC magazines, various other publications. And here's our info session today where we are. Uh, as, a, as a further thing, looking down the road, and uh, I mentioned that person could uh, finish, for example, the photovoltaics course, finish the program, the recent program, and they could uh, write the NABCEP 
entry level or, or uh, first level of exams. Uh, ultimately, we would be aiming at allowing people to write higher level exams. We have a little bit of an obstacle here in that the, uh, the American electrical code is different from ours. So we'd have to in some way adapt to that and uh, before we could actually have our students approach those exams because uh, it would be challenging because the codes are different, right? So we, there's, it's a possibility that we're looking at down the road from possibly, who knows, it might be two, three, five years before this comes to fruition, but um, it's the possibility. <clears throat> now, at this point, this is part-time studies and it's basically all face-to-face -face time. Uh, over a period of time, we expect that we'll evolve to have more online content. Uh, we still want to emphasize the hands-on part of it, but the fact of it is that we all know that the more things are going online, and it might end up being that possibly, who knows, I'll throw a number and say, maybe one third of the program would be doable remotely. And, the re and there would be some face-to-face, -face, and obviously you don't want to lose the hands-on part of it, because that's, you want to be able to do something with what you know. Uh, we're part-time studies now, which what I would expect would be offered on a maybe a Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday basis, three hours each evening. That might be a typical way of uh, delivering this. However, it may be that um, I well, we, we did some surveys in the run-up to this uh, program, and we found that a lot of people actually didn't like this thing of having it spread over weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. They'd rather come in for one solid week, Monday to Saturday, and just sort of work away at it and get that one course out of the way in six days instead of you know, chipping away at it three hours at a time over a, a whole fall, for example. So that may come about if there's enough demand for it. And that's, that's, this is a version of doing something like that where we need to cover 45 hours in a course. And in order to cover that 45 hours, uh, we may arrange it so that somebody could do a 15 hour uh, online pre-course and then come to BCIT and do a 30 hour, that is a, a week long course where they're in the lab and hands on every day and, and lectures and so on and get one course out of the way uh, in, in five days, uh, which would fit in with some employer's uh, request or requirement that they don't have their people here on Saturdays and whatnot. So certain employers, like for example, uh, you know, like maybe BC Hydro or certain other employers uh, sometimes buy up a week and say, we want our people to take this course or that course that relates to uh, some new stuff that's coming on stream. So we may tailor some things to be delivered in that, that way. Again, yeah, that's uh, looking down the road a ways. Okay, this is looking like way down the road. So right now we're talking about eight courses. We've got four courses as sort of a foundation or base level. And then there's a second four courses that relate quite specifically to certain uh, parts of renewable energy. You notice the first baseline courses like programmable controllers, well, there's many things that can be done with that. Programmable relays, variable frequency drives, uh, principles, circuit analysis. It's kind of a, not, I won't say entry level because the entrants in this case are, are fairly advanced as they are. Uh, but that is a, a potentially a foundation for a further program that we, uh, we envision may come on stream maybe two, three years down the road. However, the first four courses of this renewable energy program could serve as a baseline that would allow you to stream into a program that's called advanced industrial control. Now advanced industrial control means that there'd be a further four courses beyond the four baseline courses. So having taken the first four, uh, you could choose basically, okay, I'm going renewable energy. I'm gonna take those other four courses or you could choose, having taken the first four baseline courses, I'm gonna take these other four courses and be into a more uh, manufacturing um, uh, process 
type of uh, industrial type of, of environment with more instrumentation involved. So that's, uh, again, a way down the road thing. But for those of you, again, that are looking for sort of general upgrading that might lead somewhere, and it, you, it's even at this point maybe somewhat nonspecific, I think the first four courses, well, we have lots of people taking very similar courses to those here now at BCIT. Uh, this building is pretty busy in the evening with people taking PLC, that is programmable controller courses, variable frequency drive courses, electrical code courses, and so on. Um, so uh, these types of courses are being taken anyway. Uh, the ones that are being offered now are not for credit. They're for information, people that want to improve their knowledge. They don't, they're not looking for a certificate. They're not looking for a program as such. They're just looking for courses. Uh, so the one I've got, the slide that I've got up there now is looking at what might be a, uh, a somewhere uh, we're using the four courses of the ReSIM program uh, as a baseline or a stepping stone towards another option that might be offered uh, that relates to uh, industrial control at a, at a fairly advanced level. So this, of course, means more programming, more positioners, more servo controls, and, and so on, more closed loop control, if you happen to know what that means. Um, so that's uh, looking way down the road, but uh, there's shows some avenues that are possible and uh, this is this is going to happen. It's just a matter of whether it happens to be in two years from now or whether it's going to be three or four years from now. Okay, thanks for your attention. Does anybody have any questions? Does you mentioned uh, some programming software. Yes. Is that included in the tuition? <clears throat> yeah, it's included in the in the total cost. Um, the cost per course is around, I th I'm not sure quite what it is, it's, it's around almost $1,000, I guess, for each course. And there's uh, the one course, uh, the tuition is, uh, or the, the additional thing that you'll have to buy will be a programmable relay. The base relay, I think it's $136, we get a, a good institutional discount for, for the students. You take that away with you when you're finished. And you get the software, which I think is around $60 or thereabouts. So for the price of what's a textbook right now, because a textbook costs $150 or $200, saying, let's forget the textbook. Let's just concentrate on something that's going to do something for us and program it and make it you know, operate devices. OK, so that, that's a, it's, it's not included in tuition. But if you look at that $10,000 number, uh, it's in there somewhere. right? Yeah, any, yes? When are you programming the first one of this program to actually <clears throat> uh, The courses are all offered now on the BCIT website. So the eight courses are, are there. You can see them. Uh, nobody's going to take the, the last six at this point because you have to have the first two first. Uh, but the first two are being offered in, in September. <clears throat> Uh, as far as I know, there, I, I have no idea, but uh, we're kind of expecting a, a fairly decent joy. I, I would s just about guarantee they're not full at this point, that we are just basically launching today. There's some knowledge out there of the program, um, but the, uh, I, I'm sure the courses aren't full at this point. Uh, yes? It, it, it's it's uh, theoretically possible to register for the program, uh, you know, at any time at this point, uh, but there's no need to do it until you've taken the first two courses. So just from a practical point of view, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't register for the program until you've taken the first two courses because there's no point in in, in doing that until you you know I would just me I would sit through the first course and say. Yeah, this is this is okay. I think this is I'm going to go with this, or this is not me at all. This is too 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 much of this or that, right? So I would just wait till you have finished the first two courses before you register for the program. I mean, even for the first two courses, it's not available. So I guess 
Well, they are available in September. Ah, available in September. Yeah, they're available in September, yes. So apply and show the funeral activities. Uh, you can register for the courses no. in September, yes. Starting now or starting. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So so you can you could register, go out and you should be able to register right now. And uh, the course is delivered in September. Yes. Uh, but right now, like you're saying, you guys aren't exactly sure how you're going to schedule those first two courses, like how, like how it's set up to be. Uh, there are specific dates, I believe. Uh, I don't know what they're offhand. You'd have to check the website and uh, to, to get the, what the dates are that the courses are being delivered. Sorry, is it not? It'll be August. Oh, okay, they're going to put the dates on in August? Okay, yeah, I thought they were there now. The courses are definitely being shown there on the, on the website, and they're being listed and described, but the actual start dates aren't there, I guess. But definitely the uh, first, uh, I'm not sure if, the, if it'll just be the first two that will have dates in August, or if we will know beyond that. But in any case, you can only sign up for the first two then anyway. I was just saying, Oh, okay. Well, oh yeah. One thing I want to make clear is that at this point, it's being offered strictly on this part-time, two days a week basis. Oh, okay. It'll be strictly Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, oh, Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're looking down the road when we're saying if the demand is such that we need to right. start doing blocks and and people more or less insist on it. Uh, I guess between you and me and the gate post, uh, I guess there's nobody listening here. Uh, it made it easier for us to have our program approved if it was offered in this fashion. Right. Uh, to, when you start doing week-long offerings, it's, uh, it's a little politically a little more difficult to make that fly, so we just did what we could get, uh, I won't say get away with, but anyway, it worked, and uh, so that's, uh, we're looking towards uh, probably having uh, more of the block one week, because right. that's what people want. That's what the sur our survey said, but that uh, only impressed me and not too many other people, I guess. Um, any other questions? Yes? So as it is now with the, the part-time setup, um, how long would one course take? Uh, at three hours a night, so that's six hours a week. That's 45 hours altogether, so that's nine, it would be nine weeks. No, eight, pardon me, it's be eight, it'd be seven, seven and a half weeks, I guess it is. Yeah, seven and a half weeks would be, uh, because seven weeks is uh, 42 plus three hours is, yeah, so half a week. So, and that works out to eight weeks because there's usually a stat in there somewhere, right? Yeah, so it's not that long when you come down to it. It's not like you're taking up your whole fall. You might start in you're looking September, October, middle of October, maybe finishing if it started early September, somewhere in that, or count on it being done by the, by, uh, the end of October or end of November for sure, right? Oh, that's the, sort of the time frame. So then if you're doing the first two courses, you would just take one, and then after the eight weeks, you take the next one? Uh, the, the, once we nail down the dates, I mean, it's if they, the, the, opportun the options are uh, Monday, Wednesday, the usual what people prefer, uh, and Tuesday, Thursday. Now, it's conceivable that if they arrange the dates that they have Monday, Wednesday for the first course, and Tuesday, Thursday for the second course, you could conceivably be four nights a week taking those courses, and you know, at the, at the end of the seven and a half weeks, have two in hand already, right? So th if that happens that way. It, if it happens that they're both Monday, Wednesday, well, then, of course, you can't take them both at once. Okay, any other questions?